right, everybody, I want to take this time to say thank you for coming. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay, not too loud? Okay, I'd like to take this opportunity to um, introduce uh, Mayor, Mayor Bill Carpenter. Uh, Mayor, uh, Mayor Carpenter has a prior commitment, so he's going to speak um, at this time. Um, Mayor Carpenter is a 27-year resident of Brockton. He's currently completing his second term as Ward 5 representative to Brockton School Committee. He has also co-founded the Independent Academy, the fourth high school in the state, and the 43rd school in the country, established to educate students who are in drug recovery programs. Mayor Carpenter has been active in the community since coming to Brockton. Bill Carpenter has served as the mayor of Brockton since 2014. The mayor has been supporting the efforts for Choices for Teens since our first meeting with him over a year ago. Seems like a vision, he sees our vision for C4T um, and having teaching the students and prevent the prevention of opioid abuse, bullying, um, gang, drugs, violence, and we thank him for supporting us on this very interesting journey. Please help me welcome Mayor Bill Carpenter. I think my time's just about up, isn't it? That's it. So uh, it's a real pleasure for me to be here with you tonight, and I apologize uh, that I can't stay. Ironically, I have to go do a radio interview about uh, recreational marijuana, and somehow these two topics don't really go very well together, so I'll try not to mix them up. Um, I'm actually glad you, you reminded me a little bit about uh, Independence Academy, uh, the state's fourth recovery school that we founded a few years ago, because it really ties in directly to why I'm such a strong supporter of Choices for Teens. Um, I, uh, I ran, for the, I ran for public office for the first time when I was 53 years old. I ran for the school committee. And the reason I ran for school committee is I had a teenage son that had become addicted to drugs while attending Brockton High School. And I was frustrated at the time with what I felt was a lack of responsiveness of, of the school department in the city at that time uh, to the issue of uh, teenagers and addiction. At that time, as soon as they heard the word drugs and a teenager, they just expelled them from school and it wasn't their problem anymore. So uh, that led to me being elected to the school committee. And so what I figured out when I got to the school committee, I figured out very quickly that my passion wasn't really teenagers and addiction. My passion was at-risk youth and young people growing up in the city that face all types of risks, of addiction just being one of them. But bullying, gang violence, domestic violence, uh, gun violence, all of the different challenges that a young person can face, particularly growing up in a city like Brockton. And so that's really what my passion was and still is. And, um, and I've always had a very strong feeling that our battleground is the middle schools that that's at sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. That's where we win or lose this fight. And we need to start talking to children even younger than that. But sixth, seventh, and eighth grade is where we really have to help young people make good decisions. And to help young people to realize um, that a decision they make at that age could impact the outcome of the rest of their life and also to help give them the skills to make those better decisions, to help give them the skills around resisting peer pressure and, uh, and, and being able to, to make positive decisions, to feel as though that they have self-worth and self-esteem, to feel as though that they really do have an opportunity in life that's worth working for and worth making good choices for. So, um, when I heard about what uh, these guys were planning to do at North Middle School around mentoring and helping young teens make good decisions, uh, I just am just truly appreciative of, of what you're doing and knowing what an impact it's going to have on the young people 
uh, going through that school that have this opportunity because it's just so critical that we are identifying all young people in this age group, but particularly being able to identify teenagers that may be at higher risk. Um, you know, one of the things we figured out, whether it's in a public school system like Brockton, is that a lot of young people have a lot of stuff going on in their life. Uh, kids are exposed to trauma that they should never be exposed to. Uh, kids are faced with um, dealing with things at a younger age than I would have ever thought I would have been dealing with when I was growing up a long time ago. Um, so that's why this is so important to have the mentoring, the positive messages, the positive role models, early intervention uh, with kids that are in that sixth, seventh, eighth grade group. So I, I just came tonight to show my support and to let everyone know how critically important this is to the young people growing up in Brockton to have a program like this. And I truly appreciate everything that you're doing. Thank you. Okay, we're just gonna take a, a few minutes, probably about 10 minutes. You can finish grabbing something to eat, get a drink, and then we're gonna resume and, um, with our speakers. Thank you, everybody. Okay, everybody, we're going to resume. If everybody could just gather in this room, please. I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce Lori Pru. Lori Pru has been an unbelievable support for Choices for Teens. Her background is in nonprofit, and she is a wealth of knowledge and has really helped us get this program off the ground, been with us from day one. We'd like to take the time to thank Lori for coming and for all of her support. And she's going to just speak briefly on Choices for Teens and what it's doing for our community. Thank you. Good evening, Choices for Teens supporters. We love you, and we need you, and we appreciate you. Uh, thank you so much for your support of Choices for Teens mentoring group under the dedicated leadership of our talented uh, president and probate officer Tracy Hillman and social worker and executive director Janet Savard. Could we have a big round of applause for their vision and their amazing work? <clears throat> Through their professions, both Tracy and Janet observed firsthand how quickly middle schoolers without role models and opportunity can resort to making poor choices that can adversely affect their lives forever. This is why they, this is why they had the vision to start Choices for Teens. According to a new 2017 list published published by Neighborhood Scout, an online database of U.S. neighborhood anal analysts, Brockton is one of the 100 most dangerous cities in the United States. It actually ranked number 76. Um, and drugs and gang violence still remain a concern. Thanks to a phenomenal uh, uh, group of chief elected officials that we have in the area, including Mayor Bill Carpenter, who has just done amazing work to bring, uh, to help alleviate this problem with his aggressive public policies, public safety policies, the number of police officers have increased to over 200, search warrants have more than doubled, and firearm related incidents are down 27 percent since 2013. But we have a lot more work to do as a community. Tracy and Janet had a vision to employ preventative measures to help these children avoid drugs, gangs, and jails. They partnered and were trained by the Massachusetts Mentoring Partnership. 
Studies have shown the supportive, healthy relationships formed between mentors and mentees are both immediate and long-term. They contribute to a host of benefits, which include increased high school graduation rates, lower high school dropout rates, healthier relationships and lifestyle choices, improved behavior both at home and at school, and decreased likelihood of initiating drug and alcohol and other adverse behaviors. Realization of the Choices for Teens vision requires community support. My appeal to you is to please help, and help in the way that works best for you. You've already shown support by being here tonight, and we're very grateful. Um, but there are other great ways to show support. You can write a check here tonight made out to Choices for Teens, and there is a, a uh, depository over there where your checks will be received. Or you can participate in the GoFundMe campaign, grassroots fundraising initiative, to raise $15,000 that was uh, launched by Karen Newman on social media. And we're most grateful to Karen for her initiative with this. You can volunteer. Choices for Teen needs after school mentors, administrative support, and more. Please talk to Tracy or Janet if you, to get involved. You can donate. They need after school snacks, beverages, school supplies, art supplies, and more. We have an online sign up through Sign Up Genius, and donations can be sent directly to Choices for Teens. Like the African proverb so accurately states, it takes a village to raise a child. Thank you for being a part of our loving and dedicated village, committed to giving middle schoolers in Brockton the best possible opportunity to succeed, devoid of drugs, drugs, gangs, and violence. We look forward to working with you together. Thank you and God bless. <laughs> Okay, thank you everybody. Um, we have a few more people speaking, but we, I, just, I basically would like to just take a minute to thank you all for coming. Thank you all who have been so supportive to us in so many ways from day one and believed in our vision. Uh, when I met Tracy through a mutual friend, she and I had the same vision. My background is I'm a marriage and family therapist and specialized in um, dual diagnosis. And I always dealt with the adult population. My, my vision, my goal was, you know, to get them younger. And I always had the middle school age in my mind. And I just couldn't seem to get out of, you know, out of my own way to change careers, what have you. When we were introduced, it was an automatic connection. We both had the same vision and we went off running and we've been working real hard for a year and a half, almost two years now and we have come to where we have because of people like you who have it in your hearts to just want to do a little bit more, just give back, pay it forward, just help. Even if everybody helps just a little in some way, um, that's, all, that's all we're asking for tonight is just to, you know, Hopefully this will tug at your heartstrings, realizing how important it is that we all work together. It takes a village, like Tracy, uh, Lori had mentioned. It takes a village for us to make a difference in the, in the lives of our next generation. And there are so many people that I want to thank, and, but I don't think that I'm going to go through everybody just because it, there is such a long list. I appreciate everybody. I want to thank our board, who has been incredible and, again, been there with us from day one for the fundraising events and the fundraising committee. Thank you, thank you. I'd like to, you know, thank um, our videographer, um, Christina Cobb, and our photographers, Karen McNeely and Karen, uh, I'm sorry, and Joan Burke. Um, we want to just be able to spread the word as much as possible and everybody behind the scenes thank you thank you thank you and those of you who have gone above and beyond and put endless hours in we want to say thank you 
And lastly, I'd, I just would like to thank um, Neil, um, Neil Levine, don't know where he is, from the Foundry, um, who, offered, who, who donated his, his restaurant tonight in behalf of Choices for Teens, and also his lovely wife, who was unable to be here tonight because she's in somewhere a lot warmer. Um, and Tracy, I'm sorry, Wendy is our um, administrative coordinator and has been working numerous hours. And we just thank them and thank all of you that are here tonight for your support. And now I'd like to introduce Tracy Hillman. Tracy is, um, she is the founder and president for Choices for Teens. Um, Tracy's background, she graduated from the uh, University of Mass in H Amherst. And she is a, um, she's a retired pr probation officer. And Tracy had, this, like I said, had the same vision as I and wanted to reach these children before they got into the system. And together with both of our backgrounds, it's, it's a nice fit, and we just would love for you to embrace what she has to say about Choices for Teens, and I welcome you, my friend, and come on up. You're welcome. You know, on my hand. <laughs> thank you. I, too, would like to thank everyone for coming out tonight on this Monday evening. I'm sure there are so many other places that you could be, and I appreciate your time and commitment to come out to hear more about Choices for Teens Mentoring Group. Choices for Teens uh, Mentoring Group is a nonprofit, community-based after-school program that is designed to introduce drugs, gangs, and violence prevention techniques and strategies to our middle school age youth in the Brockton area. My vision actually started back in 2003 while I was a member of Greater Zion Church of God in Christ under the leadership of Pastor Dunwoody, who is here this evening, and you will hear from her later. We are committed to making uh, and providing a quality site-based program in Brockton for middle school-aged children ages 11 through 14. We meet with the students on site at the middle school. They don't have to leave the school. We bring our mentors in two days a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays for 90 minutes each day. And we provide prevention strategies. Years ago, uh, I believe it was Nancy Reagan who said, just say no. And today in this day and time, it's, you, know, you have to go a little bit further and explain why are we saying just say no. So we provide strategies and role play and um, different activities to help the students to know uh, what to do. If you're, put, if you're put in a certain uh, situation, what would you do? So that's one of the activities that we have with the students. We provide social and emotional wellness support along with valuable resources to the parents. And I'd like to interrupt just right here because we have two students that are mentors from Stonehill College. Um, the mentors look like the population that we serve. Um, over 80% of the students that we serve are minority students that come from various backgrounds, from uh, Haiti, Cape Verde, um, even uh, African Americans in the Brockton area. These students are juniors at Stonehill College. If I could just <laughs> have you come up. Yeah. One is from yeah. Jarrell. Stonehill College students, uh, Jarrell Archer and DJ Haskins from uh, Baltimore and New Jersey. So they are willing to go into the school system with myself and provide some positive uh, choices in, in working with the students at North Middle School. Thank you for coming up. So we have a partnership with Stonehill College. Stonehill College provides the Downtown Center for Community Engagement in downtown Brockton. They provide an incubation space for nonprofit organizations. And that's what we're considered to be in the incubator because we're still growing. And uh, before we can actually start crawling and walking, we uh, have the space there at Harbor One, uh, Harbor One Bank in downtown Brockton. We also have a partnership with Brockton Police Department. They allow police officers to come into the school system and facilitate group discussions with the students. 
they come in in a non-threatening environment, they talk to the students, they answer questions, and oftentimes I have to tell them, okay, 90 minutes is up, they have to go. But they truly, truly enjoy the engagement with police officers and ask questions like, why, why do you stop me? You can't stop me because my pants is hanging down. <laughs> so we have exchanged back and forth with the students and it's always on a, on, on a good basis. We have a partnership with Mass Mentoring Partnership who provides match, match activities with uh, various professional uh, sporting events, whether it's the Boston Celtics or the Red Sox or the Revolution team. We uh, afforded tickets. Anyone that has, like a season ticket holder, m may choose not to go to a game on any given night. Those tickets are then um, directed to us. So that's, that's a good thing. Match me mass Mentoring Partnership also provides standards and evidence-based practices that we follow so that we are uh, providing information to the children on a developmentally stage. They're between the ages of 11 and 14, so we want to make sure, we know that they're impressionable, so we don't want to talk to them like they're in high school. We want to talk to them like they are in middle school. So over the years, as, as Janet stated, I have, um, I've worked as a probation officer for a total of over 34 years. I started out in the district court, made a lateral move to Superior Court, spent 17 years in Suffolk Superior Court, and then in 2006, I was promoted to probation officer in charge in Plymouth, OCC, Office of the Community Correction Center. And although my uh, office changed geographically, the population that I served pretty much stayed the same. Um, although there was one common denominator, it wasn't race, it wasn't their education, it wasn't their family dynamic. It was basically most of the people, most of the probationers that I supervised, uh, they lacked the support of having a mentor. They lacked that added level of support from their parents or their teachers. Um, and also, that was the age when they first was introduced to drugs, whether they were in the seventh grade or the eighth grade. So taking all of that into consideration, um, my life has been impacted to know that that is the age group that we want to address. That's who we want to provide the prevention strategies to both boys and girls. So I'd like to tell you a story. <laughs> I'd like to give you um, this story about someone who has impacted my life tremendously while I was a probation officer at Suffolk Superior Court. I supervised a young man, and I will call him Michael. And Michael was 25 years old. He had just, he was released from prison after serving five years in jail. He had multiple charges on his record. Uh, he, he went to see the junction served the five years, uh, firearm possession, distribution of drugs, possession of drugs, school zone violation. There were just like so many charges against, uh, against him that he pled guilty to and he knew when he got out of jail he was on probation for three to five years. And back in those days, I don't know if some of you remember, um, with sentencing guidelines and truth in sentencing, and if a person was on probation and they had a split sentence, three to five years, <laughs> if they violated their probation, they were going for three to five years. And I would always encourage him, Michael, you have to report. Michael, you know, you have to find a job. You, you know, these are the things you have to do, your court order to do. And Michael struggled. He struggled. He lived in the inner city of Boston, very difficult for him to, re to report in a timely manner. I remember saying to him, you need an alarm clock, you need to make sure you get in. And I found myself working harder than he was because I knew you know, he had so much potential. He did not need to go to jail. And at that time, the minimum wage was probably like $7 an hour. And he looked at me and he said, really? $7 an hour? And he had, you know, his background was in the street selling drugs making money, and he's like, I can make $700 in an hour. Why would I go get a job and make $7 an hour? So we would have conversations back and forth, back and forth, and then he, he had a girlfriend that became pregnant. 
And that's when Michael decided to change his life around. He said, I'm going to have a child. I need to, you know, turn things around so that I could do better for my child. And um, he started to uh, provide lyrics for rap music. He said he was going to meet Jay-Z. He's going to meet P. Diddy. And he had the lyrics. He'll come into the office and, Miss Hillman, listen to this, listen to this. And he'll pull out the CD and put the music on. And what do you think about this? And I'm like, mm, too many swears. No, <laughs> no, you don't need the swears. You don't need the swears. A couple weeks will go by. He'll come back. Oh, what about this? Oh, no, nope, too many swears, too many swears. But every time he would pull out the CD, I'd see all this money. He had so much money in his pocket. And I knew he wasn't working. I knew he was still selling drugs. I knew he was still, you know, living the street life. He had a very, very tough time in uh, changing his lifestyle. To make a long story short, unfortunately, it was the street life that led to Michael's death. Michael was killed by a rival gang member. And I reflect back and I say, if only, if only Michael had a mentor, if only Michael had someone who cared about him, if only Michael had someone who could help him make positive choices, if only Michael was, you know, steered in the right direction, completed high school, you know, if, he, if only he could have seen his child more, excuse me, child born, it would be uh, much better for him. But unfortunately, he was killed because th that was the lifestyle that, that he lived. So that was the past. So I'd like to turn our focus on to the future and say only if. Only if you, individuals here, could make a, a difference in terms of the future of our generation. Only if you can uh, talk to your employers or businesses who can match your donation tonight would make a huge difference. Only if we could, you know, have some direction for our future generation in terms of what's important for them in their generation. Only if we could eliminate the stories about Michael. I think, you know, it takes, it takes time and it, it takes one person to change. You, it, oftentimes we look at other people and say, oh, this should happen, that should happen. But we all can change. We all can make a difference in the lives of, of our young people. And only then can we be successful in our mission to interrupt the preschool to prison pipeline. Thank you. presentation that uh, Mr. Abrams would like to make at this time. Thank you so much. One thing I've learned by working with Choices for Teen that success is not final, failure is not fatal, the courage to go on, that's all that matters. And that's what we have learned today. They have done one thing that will change everything. And that's why I'm so proud of being a part of work and doing anything that I can do, the one thing that will change everything. So on behalf of the Veteran Outreach community, we want to donate $500 to Choices for Teen, and we want to thank you. Thank you. And we just ask that, that if you dig deep, do the one thing that will change everything, one life, one person at a time. That's all we're asking. You change one Michael around, and we'll be able to continue to give you that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to take a minute to um, introduce District Attorney Tim Cruz. Tim Cruz has served as Plymouth County District Attorney since November 2004. He has advocated for the opioid epidemic, drugs, gang, and violence, just to name a few. District Attorney Cruz has served two terms as President of the Massachusetts District Attorney Association. During the, his tenure, he was aggressively prosecuting crime in the Plymouth County. Most recently, D.A. Cruz has focused his office's efforts on battling the opioid crisis at all levels. Through specialized units in his office, and he has worked to protect children, the elderly, domestic violence victims, and disabled from abuse. 
His office works collaboratively with the local law enforcement, mental health pro professionals, social service agencies throughout the county. Choices for Teens is honored to have DA Cruz speak on behalf of Choices for Teens. Please help me welcome DA Cruz. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Jan and Tracy, thank you so much for everything that you're doing for the kids here in the city and also you know, in the county of Plymouth. As, as Jan said, I've, I've been the DA now for 17 years, and I've worked in Plymouth County as a criminal trial lawyer for 33 years. I was an assistant DA back in the 80s, and I was a criminal defense lawyer in, through the 90s and tried lots of cases, met lots of people, met lots of kids who have been charged with crimes, and lots of kids who, quite honestly, never really had a chance. Kids who were not in a position where they could get help from somebody that could mentor them, somebody that could help them, family members that didn't exist for them. And you see the opportunities, and you hear stories like Tracy said about uh, Michael. I, I have stories like that also, and they're really sad kids that could have done something great things with their lives. And so it gives me really, I, I feel really good when I'm able to help a program such as this, making sure that we can go out and talk about helping the kids in our communities that need it so much. When I came back from doing other things, when I came back to be district attorney in 2001, a gentleman came into my office who I knew. I knew him from the court system. I'd known him for a long time. And I knew he wasn't a lawyer. So I asked him, well, you know, what are you doing here? And he said, well, I'm the director of preventative resources. And I said, well, that's quite a handle, but what do you do? And for the next hour and a half, it was like drinking out of the fire hydrant. All the preventative programs and things that we end up doing and going to schools and talking to kids about uh, whether it be internet safety issues, social host liability, underage drinking, the drug problem, making sure we can go to schools, making sure we can try to help the kids so that we don't see them down the road. For the last 10 years, we've been working with various schools and programs and trying to help kids who witness violence in our communities to help them get the help that they need so that the kid who witnesses violence today eight years from now is not going to be committing violence. And that's what's important. And that's why programs like this are important. We've worked and we, part and we partnered with uh, the Brockton Public School System in helping kids learn about when something bad happens, there are people that you can talk to. We're dealing with significantly adverse childhood experiences. Kids who are seeing things in their lives. Kids who potentially have they, been physically abused. They may be sexually abused. Their parents may be in jail. Their parents may be on drugs. Their parents may be involved in criminal aspects. And what studies show is that the more ACEs you have, adverse childhood experiences you have, the more at risk you are going to be. And the more at risk you're going to be, more likely than not, you're going to end up either doing crime yourself or going to be addicted onto these drugs. So that's why mentoring programs and getting back to the kids at a young age is so vital. We've seen these cycles of violence. We see cycles of domestic violence, cycles of child abuse. You see the kids who are witnessing those crimes. It's not unusual for years later for them to be the individuals that are doing those crimes. That's why it's important. And now more than ever, where we currently find ourselves here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts with the opioid crisis, we have now opened these adverse childhood experiences to the next step the drug-endangered kids, the kids whose parents are using opiates and passing away, the kids who have nowhere to turn. And are those are the kids that are going to be using drugs later on. We have a responsibility to help the kids that we can help at that age level. We need to get younger. I agree with that 100%. And that's why programs such as with Tracy and Jana put together are so incredibly important, making sure that we can help those children and stop those cycles. So I'm proud to support the program. I'm proud to make sure that you know, we can come out and continue to talk about it. I agree that people need to reach deep uh, to help programs like this because nothing's free. Our kids' futures are not free. And stopping crime in the road that we are is not going to be free. So I suggest and I hope that everybody that can give you contribute what you can. If you have employer matches, make sure they can do that also. And I'm really hopeful that as we proceed down this road, 
that we can make sure we have young men like that that are helping the kids. They need people like you. You are the people they're watching. You are the kids that they're going to relate to. Someday down the road, you may not even know it, someday down the road, those kids are going to remember you. And they're going to, make it, they're going to come to that fork in the road that we all come to. And because of you, they're going to make sure they go down the right path because of your leadership and your activities here in, in, from Stonehill and here in Brockton. So let me thank you now for the work that you're doing now, for the lives that you will change in the future. So I, I thank you. I thank the program. Janet and Tracy, great job. Let's continue it together, and we can make a difference. Thank you. Okay, I hope everyone is enjoying themselves. You're, there's food over here, help yourself with the snacks and the refreshments. At this time, I'd like to introduce uh, Pastor Sybil Dunwoody. She has pastored Greater Zion Church of God in Christ in Dorchester for over 27 years. She has provided a lot of inspiration to me uh, 15 years ago in actually getting the girls program started. And, uh, at this time, she's going to say a few words for support. I don't know really what to say, but I applaud this young lady because 15 years ago, she was one of the ones that started the mentoring program um, in the Greater Zion, well, it was Little Zion then, Church of God in Christ. And it was a program that was so successful that the Liberty Mutual Insurance Company funded our program. And they gave us over $25,000 for this program. And it was because of Sister Tracy, and there's some others, Sister Barbara, they're all, they're here today. We didn't have the, the drug problem then, but it was to prevent and help young women teen pregnancy. That was running rampant in our community. But I'm so happy to say that 15 years later, most of the mentees that was in our mentor program, they have gone on to college. I think one of the youngest mentees will graduate My granddaughter, she will graduate from Spelman <clears throat> College, and she's already been accepted to Emory Medical School to be a doctor. Our young, our young mentees have graduated. They've all just about graduated from college, and I am so godly proud of that. Um, and they're gonna, when they graduate, we tell them that they have to come back and pull somebody else out. Sister Tracy was one of the ones that started it. I see my Barbara here, I see Faye, they're all here. They were the mentors for that program. So you could not have better people in charge. Like I said, 15 years ago, it wasn't the drug problem, but it was the teen pregnancy problem. And um, we weathered the strong storm. And I can tell you that we're still weathering the strong storm. Our church is in one of the highest crime um, areas in the city of Boston. We're in Dorchester. So we're on the main line, and we haven't gotten tired yet. We're still doing the things that we need to do to pull our young people out. And when she talked about the story of Michael, I have a personal Michael, my grandson. He was raised in the church, knew all the church 
but because of whatever was going on in the streets, he was killed. It almost tore our family's hearts out. But by programs like this, our young people will have something to look to and some people to look to that we won't have any more Michaels. We won't have any more little Vinnies. So just keep on doing it. And whatever I can do in the Boston area, that's what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to look around and find out who needs help. And then I'm supposed to lift up that hand to help them. Just as you helped our children go to college and graduate, then we're supposed to come back and help somebody else. So I'm going to be on that GoFund list to try to help somebody because I believe the late Dr. King's favorite song was, if I can help somebody along the way, then my living will not be in vain. Thank you. As I stated earlier, we are mentoring students at North Middle School two days a week. And it's a pilot program. Superintendent uh, Kathleen Smith has allowed Janet and I to, to run this program at North Middle School. We do have a student here by the name of Christian Nichols, who is so great, so gracious to come up at this time to give you some insight in terms of his experience as a mentee at North Middle School. Christian. Um, well, kind of hard to say, but uh, who, uh, being at this program, is good and I would just like to say that I learned a lot from this program and that it taught me stuff like about drugs and gangs not to like do this type of stuff because it can like put my future in danger and because my mom she would tell me a lot stuff about not doing this stuff because like I watch a lot of movies and shows <laughs> so and they have a lot of those stuff in it <laughs> and the video game she tells me not to play like the shooting games because it because it happens in like the real world and then um and I tell her I won't do it but she just wants to make sure that no you can't do this son so but um this program has taught me a lot about good stuff and bad stuff, like consequences, what to do, what not to do, and that's all I have to say. Thank you. I'd like to take a minute to introduce Danella Clark, who is the executive director from the uh, Boston Arts Academy. It's an amazing program. It has supported so many children. And if you ever have the chance to go see these children, you will not see a dry eye in the house. I've been to a few, and it is amazing. And Danella has committed her life to helping those in need. And I'd like to introduce her, and she has a few words to say. Thank you. Thank you, Janet. Thank you, Tracy. I'm not going to be long before you. I, um, I am a Christian. I am uh, somebody that on any given Sunday, you can find me at Concord Baptist Church. I've 
spent the past 30 years working for exceptional nonprofit organizations, but because it's a nonprofit doesn't mean that we're not supposed to have profit. So I just want to pick up on what DA Cruz said and um, what the pastor who was up before me said, I have my wallet in my hand. I would be remiss if I didn't ask each and every one of you, it may have been done earlier, I see this lady pulling her um, pocketbook as sort of like what we, what we do in church. I would be remiss if I didn't ask you with everything that you've heard this evening to make a donation. You don't have to do it on GoFundMe. I personally don't like um, doing fundraising on Facebook because as quiet as it's kept, they take a lot of fees. So if you like me, and I'm gonna lead by example by writing a check, um, please make a donation. No amount is too small. It doesn't matter if it's $50, $100, doesn't have to be what Mr. Abrams did, $500, but every penny counts and every penny matters. I always say to people, life is a choice. We thank you for making the choice to joining us here um, this evening, but also make the choice to make a donation. I tell you, someone was talking about their granddaughter. I tell my kids, my son went to Fesident, he's now working at Eastern Bank. My daughter is the first in our family at 28 years old to have three degrees and pass the bar on the first try. And no one is more excited than they are when they get someone, to, uh, Pastor mentioned uh, Spellman. My daughter went to Hampton for undergrad, Suffolk JD MBA. No one is font bond for high school. No one is more excited than they are when they get the annual report. And my son, who went to Fesadin and Tabor, says, Mommy, look, I'm in the category. We have got to give back. This work does not happen. Um, without giving, and again, as I said, no amount is too small. I love the idea of the matching gift. So please, before you go, we're in a restaurant. I don't know where there's a basket. We do this for political by events by the door. Please do not leave without making um, a donation. And if you didn't bring it, I'm sure there's a place that you can mail it in or do a credit card. So thank you. Okay, everybody, I again want to thank you all for coming out tonight on this Monday night. And Tracy and I can't thank you enough for your support. Just being here warms our hearts. We are so grateful, and we just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, it, um, like Danella had mentioned, you know, any amount will be helpful. We're starting grassroots. We're trying to get this off the ground. We are trying, it's, it's a journey. And what we've gotten from it so far is pretty amazing. I mean, I inside, I'm <clears throat> not gonna get emotional, I swore I wasn't. <laughs> but it is so heartwarming to know that there are people out there who really, really care, you know? And we wanna make this world a better place. And the way to start is with our youth. <clears throat> and it does take a village. So, again, thank you so much. There's plenty of food that Neil has supplied for us, please, get yourself something to eat, and thank you. Thank you for coming and supporting Choices for Teens. Thanks. And lastly, before we close, I also want to uh, ask anyone, if you know anyone who wants to be a mentor, we are starting to recruit new mentors in June. So please visit the website, www.choicesforteens.org. If you know someone who could mentor, if it's not two days a week, maybe they could mentor the students one day a month. We are recruiting for mentors starting in June, so please visit the website. Um, that's another way of making a donation. Giving your time is important as well. Thank you again. Please enjoy the food. Thank you.